Hi, my name is Emma Parra and this summer I worked in the Department of Medicine in the Conic Lab which focuses on HIV research. Hi, my name is Christina Brentley and this summer I worked in the Erickson Lab under the Department of Pediatric Genetics and we conducted research focused on human pick disease type C. Neiman Pick type C disease is a lysosomal storage disease associated with mutations in NPC1 and NPC2 genes. Neiman Pick type C affects an estimated 1 in 150,000 people. Approximately 50% of cases present before 10 years of age, but manifestations may first be recognized as late as the sixth decade. Newborns can present with abdominal swelling and severe liver disease from infiltration of the liver and or respiratory failure from infiltration of the lungs. Other infants without liver or pulmonary disease have low muscle tone and developmental delay. The classic presentation occurs in mid to late childhood. Symptoms eventually become disabling, making oral feeding impossible. Death usually occurs in the second or third decade from aspiration pneumonia. HIV is an epidemic that is fairly new in our society that is still left without a cure. HIV is an infectious disease that can be transmitted sexually from blood to blood contact or from mother to child. The HIV virus attacks your T cells, which is what your immune system uses to fight off diseases and other infections. This is why, as the disease progresses, a patient develops acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and usually dies from an infection that their compromised immune system could not fight off. HIV integrates its DNA with the DNA of immune response cells, making it difficult to completely terminate. While antiviral medications have been developed and can be used to lower viral counts and stop HIV replication, HIV is still able to stay discreetly in the body in areas such as secondary lymph node tissue. This summer, I was able to observe where in the tissue heightened HIV replication occurs. With immunohistochemistry tissue staining, we were able to identify different cells throughout the tissue, helping us to better understand this complex virus. We wanted to work together for this video and incorporate the research being done in both of our laboratories, so we asked ourselves, how can these two diseases be related? And after some research, we discovered that they are linked by cholesterol. Interestingly enough, there is research suggesting that the loss of neiman pick type C proteins 1 and 2 greatly enhances HIV infectivity. It may surprise you to know that cholesterol itself isn't bad. In fact, cholesterol is just one of the many substances created and used by our bodies to keep us healthy. Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like substance that is found in all cells of the body. Your body needs some cholesterol to make hormones, vitamin D, and substances that help you digest foods. In Neiman Pick type C, the protein product of the major mutated gene, NPC1, is not an enzyme but appears to function as a transporter in the endosomal lysosomal system, which moves large water insoluble molecules through the cell. The protein coded by the NPC2 gene more closely resembles an enzyme structurally but seems to act in cooperation with the NPC1 protein in transporting molecules in the cell. The disruption of this transport system results in the accumulation of cholesterol in lysosomes. Cellular cholesterol plays a critical role in various stages of the HIV-1 replication cycle. HIV-1 fusion, entry, assembly, and budding occur at cholesterol-enriched microdomains called lipid rafts. The HIV-1 accessory protein, NEF, has been shown to induce many genes involved in cholesterol biosynthesis and homeostasis. Depletion of viron-associated cholesterol by beta cyclodextrin compromises the viral structural integrity and significantly decreases both the quantity and infectivity of virons released by infected cells. Treatment of HIV-1 particles with cholesterol sequestering compounds inhibits virus entry into host cells. Some questions that remain after our summer internship include how can the research of a genetic disease help further advance the understanding of an infectious disease? To what extent can interdepartmental research diversify the thinking processes of researchers and lead to innovation? How can the characteristics of one disease be applied to the study of another?